Good day everyone! I am here with my groupmates to present to you the language policy of the Commission on Higher Education or Higher Education Act of 1994. But before we start, let me introduce ourselves to you. I am Azalia Cruzain V. Fabul. I am 19 years old and I am from Malamig, Calapan City, Oriental, Mindoro. Hi! I'm Jamaica B. Fababari, 19 years old, from the municipality of Nohan. So, hi, I am Ira E. Galyon, 22 years old from Municipality of Calapan. Good day, everyone. My name is Mark John Paul Alasurna. I am 19 years old from the Municipality of Gloria. And for today's report, we're going to talk about the language policy of the Commission on Higher Education or the Higher Education Act of 1994. So, for the contents of our presentation, we, the Group 6, will discuss about the background of the language policy or program. Second one is the history of bilingual education. And the last one is the details about the language policy or program. On May 18, 1994, one of the important commission in the Philippines was established, the Commission on Higher Education, also known as CHED. By virtue of Republic Act No. 7722, also known as Higher Education Act of 1994, which was signed into law by former President Fidel V. Ramos. In accordance to the Republic Act 7722, the Commission on Higher Education is mandated in promoting relevant and quality higher education, ensuring access to quality higher education, and guaranteeing and protecting academic freedom for continuing intellectual growth, advancement of learning and research, development of responsible and effective leadership, education of high-level professionals, and enrichment of historical and cultural heritages. Therefore, the Commission on Higher Education, also known as CHED, has set its sights on being the most influential figure in charge of the Philippine higher education system. To continue our discussion, let us have now the background of the language policy program. Um, on May 18, 1994, one of the most important commission on our country in the Philippines was established. This act is an act creating the Commission on Higher Education appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. This Republic Act number 7722 is assigned to do tasks. See the tasks that need to take is the Commission on Higher Education needs to be the key leader of higher education system in our country in the Philippines. The next thing is why does CHED needs to be independent and separated because it is stated here in the press presentation that CHED needs to be um, separated and independent. So let us talk about that. The reason why CHED needs to be separated is during the signing of our late President Fidel B. Ramos on May 18, 1994, in this act, the Bureau of Higher Education was abolished and this is the reason why CHED needs to be independent and separated from the DEX and attached to the office of the President for the administrative purposes only. And this is also confined the jurisdiction of the Department of Education, meaning that CHED is responsible for all tertiary level only. Um, for you to have more information about what is Republic Act Number 7722, or other known, otherwise known as Higher Education Act, <clears throat> I will give the next report to Ms. Ira Galion to discuss the Section 2 of this Republic Act. So now let's proceed to Section 2 of Republic Act 7722. So Section 2 or Declaration of Policy. 
the state shall protect, foster, and promote the right of all citizens to affordable quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to ensure that education shall be accessible to all. The state shall likewise ensure and protect academic freedom and shall promote its exercise and observance for continuing intellectual growth, the advancement of learning and research, the development of responsible and effective leadership, the education of high-level and mid-level professionals, and the enrichment of our historical and cultural heritage. So, state-supported institution of higher learning shall gear their programs to national, regional, or local development plans. Finally, the institution of higher learning shall exemplify through their physical and natural surroundings, the dignity and beauty of, as well as their pride in, and the intellectual and scholarly life. So, this section mandated that the teachers have to ensure all the program's areas to, ab to be able to affect learning of all aspects as prerequisite for nation building and development as well as world challenge. That is why programs of studies must be always undergo as well as the subject for accreditation to evaluate its efficacy and level of function that was prov provided to learners. Next is the Section 3 of the Saudi Republic Act No. 7722, which is the creation of the Commission on Higher Education. In pursuance of the mentioned policies, the Commission on Higher Education is hereby created here and after referred to as the Commission. As what said by Mr. Lacerna a while ago, the Commission shall be independent and separate from the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports Texts, and attached to the Office of the President for administrative purposes only. In addition to this, its coverage shall be both public and private institution for higher education, as well as degree granting programs in all post secondary educational institutions, public and private. Now let's have a short recap on the history of bilingual education in the Philippines. The language of instruction in the Philippines was highly influenced by its colonial past. Efforts were made by the Spanish to teach the vernacular, especially in the beginning. Spanish became the language of instruction since education was not universally accessible. But Spanish did not spread on the general population but remained the language only of those educated elite. With the arrival of the Americans, English became the language of instruction. English and Spanish were the official languages of the Philippines until the 1973 Constitution declared that Filipino, laterally named Filipino and English, be the language, the official language of the Philippines for instruction and for communication. The bilingual education policy, first implemented in 1974 under the Martial Law, made Filipino the language of instruction for social sciences and social studies, as well as in music, arts, PE, home economics, practical arts, and character education, while using English as the language of instruction for mathematics, science, and technology subjects. The same language subject division is on the 1987 policy on bilingual education. In 1993, however, citing the decline of English literacy and the danger of the Philippines losing its edge on the international labor market, then President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo directed the Department of Education to use English as the primary medium of instruction in schools while still allowing Filipino as a medium of instruction in other subjects. Let us have now the first step undertaken by Chad. One of the first steps undertaken by Chad was to update the general education curriculum or GEC 
of tertiary courses leading to an initial bachelor's degree covering four curriculum years. Um, this was done to make curriculum more responsive to the demands of the next millennium. The requirements of the new GEC are embodied in the CHED Memorandum Order Number 59, Series of 1996, listed under miscellaneous of the CMO, is its language policy, which is as follows. In consonant with the bilingual education policy underlined in Dex Order Number 52, Series of 1987, the following are the guidelines of a medium of instruction to it. So now let's discuss the bilingual education policy. So the first one is language courses, whether Filipino or English should be taught in that language so basically it is stated that if a teacher is teaching an english class he or she must use the english language while if another teacher is teaching a filipino subject he or she must use the filipino language as well to avoid the confusion and misunderstanding of the learners and also to have a effective learning for them Next is, at the discretion of the HEI, literature subjects may be taught in Filipino, English, or any other language as long as there are enough instructional materials for the same. And both students and instructors or professors are competent in the language. So meaning to say, higher education institution or the HEI allow students or teachers to choose how the literature subject will be taught of in any other languages, as long as there are enough materials and, as it said, are competent in language. This way, the discussion will be more thoughtful, engaging, and interesting because it allows students to understand more about a specific topic in literature. So, in addition to this, literature um, can be more engaging and improve the language skills of the students. It can get people more interested or students more interested in learning language and give them rich and interesting materials, make them feel like they are in the story or they are in the literature and unknowingly help them learn new words, grammar, and language sense. As stated in the bilingual education policy, courses in humanities and social sciences should preferably taught in all Philippines. According to the CHED Memorandum Order Number 59, Section of 1996, it requires a minimum of nine units of Filipino for fields of study related to the humanities, social sciences, and communication. Note that in the third requirement, English can also be used since the word preferably was mentioned. However, the requirement suggests that it is better to use Filipino as a good way to teach the subject as it stimulates a person's understanding of different cultures and human relations. The creation of the Commission abolished the Bureau of Higher Education and confined the jurisdiction of the Department of Education to only primary and secondary levels of education. The Commission aimed to promote relevant and high-quality higher education, guarantee and protect academic freedom, and continuing intellectual growth. And another thing we have to remember is that the requirements concerning the language policies of the new GEC are embodied in the CHED Memorandum Order Number 59, Series of 1996, and it is in agreement with the DEX Order Number 52, Series of 1987, which we commonly know, know as the Bilingual Education Policy. So we have three requirements. First is that language courses should be taught in that language. If the subject is Filipino, it must be taught in Filipino. If the subject is English, it must be taught in English. Second, in literature courses, L Filipino and English and other languages can be used as long as there is enough material for instruction. 
and both the students and the professors are competent in using the language. And lastly, in courses in humanities and social sciences, uh, it must be taught preferably in Filipino.